part of the collaborative that is the School of Social Entrepreneurs, excuse me. And one of the things that we built this school on is collaboration. And the interesting part of this whole thing is that for the Learning Center, a lot of what we do here is based on collaboration. So very often someone we ask the question, why are we part of the School of Social Interpreters and why are we part of this collaboration? And the bottom line is that for us as an organization, the Center for Community Learning Development and Daniel Center of Learning, we deliver programs here in collaboration with universities, colleges, community organizations, and the very essence of this collaboration is what makes it possible for us to realize the vision that we've established for the space. And a lot of that vision is grounded in notions of building community capacity, building healthy community. And as you look around our region park, one of the things you will see very clearly is that we are a community in transition. We are a community going through massive transformation. And a very fundamental part of this is rooted in notions of building a very strong, resilient community. So as we explore alternatives and ways of doing this, ways that allow us to explore new possibilities, new potentials, new ways of thinking, it makes sense that we would explore as many collaborations as possible. And when we are able to sit around the table with organizations like Mars, HSC, talking about how to make a school for social entrepreneurs work, it just blows my mind at a certain level because it is, we are getting there, we are getting somewhere. And we had to reach across the pond, obviously, to look at some of the other models that exist out there. And while we are very creative at doing things, sometimes we need to explore what others are doing. And we stretched across the pond and we found a model that seems to reflect some of our own views and ideals. And one of the people who was instrumental and very, very central to the entire process of making this happen, one of the people who actually made it possible for all of you to be here today is Cynthia Ross. I would like to give a big round of applause to Cynthia Ross. Entrepreneurs Ontario, and especially for our collaborative, which is composed of Mars, Access Community Capital, the Center for Community Learning and Development, and Housing Services Corporation. So on behalf of our collaborative, uh, we'd like to recognize our esteemed guest, the Honorable Minister Michael Chan. Dr. Barbara Merck, volunteer board, a member of the Ontario Trilling Foundation. <laughs> Alistair Wilson, Chief Executive of the School for Social Entrepreneurs Global and UK. I'd also like to recognize uh, Christine Hughes, who is the President of the Board for the Centre for Community Learning and Development. Plan of the Daniels Corporation. So, without any further ado, we want to get on with the party. This is a, this is you know the beginning of a new part of our journey. Uh, the School for Social Entrepreneurs Ontario is now real. It's here. It's starting in Regent Park. We're very excited about it, and it couldn't have happened without the benefit of all of the community members and organizations that are here. Um, Housing Services Corporation was lucky enough 
to be the lead on the um, collaborative and to take a leading role in making this happen. But I also want to recognize some of our valuable partners who are also here in the room in the community. Uh, I'd like to recognize Seema from Tiffin Day, Chalo from You for Change, uh, Joe from the Center for Impact Investing at Mars. Um, there's a couple of people here from the Learning Enrichment Foundation, Toronto Employment and Social Services, Eli and Natasha from the Center for Social Innovation. Uh, we have guests from the Toronto Wiki Org, Dixon Hall, of course Trillium, our chief, chief funders, and Doug Cassie. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Michael Chan, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, and thank you very much uh, for your very kind introduction. I want to uh, welcome a foreign dignitary here. <laughs> you you kind of like stay here until Friday, go back to UK, and almost to Spain. So uh, best of luck. Uh, enjoy the summer. Enjoy the Olympic. <laughs> it's happening in your in the UK. Uh, well, today is a great day. Of course, this is a landmark uh, day for for. Uh, for us, actually, the Foundation able to participate uh, in this uh, worthy collaboration as uh, being mentioned by the MC here. I, I know some of you here, you know, these young people here, you have been 19 before you can join this thing, you know that. <laughs> right, so it's a few years for you and uh, I think the maximum age is 74, so it's a wide range of people, all levels of people, all of life, that you able to join this thing. So, I. You know, we know that uh, you know we know this is a tool to to uh, to kind of like engage people and uh, teach people uh, how to leverage you know these uh, social uh, and be a social entrepreneur. I just want to share my own uh, story with you because I know that the fellow speaker probably tell you more about this school and I I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, uh, I started my own business in 1980. And I came to this country in 1969, so it's about 10 years later, and I was able to, to start my own business. Um, when I came here, I had some difficulty in 1969. The difficulty was communication, okay, because my English was not good. In a general term, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> When I speak English, nobody is able to understand what I'm talking about. When they talk to me in English, I don't have a clue what they were talking about. Well, I have a Chinese background, so I imagine that I go to Chinatown, I can come with different people. But that, wasn't the, that was not the case. Because at that time, the Chinese who were here, they spoke a different dialect. So uh, I came here, the land of opportunity, and then I find myself not able to talk to anybody. <laughs> right, I came here 1969 September. But then by November, I find a job. I find a perfect job. Without the perfect school. Okay. <laughs> perfect job. You know, uh, I work in a uh, Chinese takeout restaurant. Only takeout. And I'm still there after 43 years. These restaurants still there. It's at the corner of Martin Grove and Bernafal. If you're out in the West End, South Dobrico, you will know the location. The name of the restaurant is called the Far East Chinese Food. Now, my job was very simple. I work in the basement, down the basement, by myself. And my job is to mix all this pump sauce. You know, when you had roll, you, you had the pump sauce, right? <laughs> At that time, I mix the pump sauce and put it in a little cup and put a lid on it. Very simple job. And uh, at the same time, I will mix the master powder and some water in there, mix it and put it into the little cup, put a lid on it. So that's my job. Now, I said it's a perfect job because I work along there, down the basement, and I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
that's, uh, that's my hurdle of communication. So uh, from that point on, I'm able to talk to a few people and try my very best to learn English. And a few months later, I got a promotion. I was promoted from the basement to the ground floor. Still <laughs> promotion. And from that point on, I move along. And today, I'm able to speak to you on the capacity as the Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. I mentioned about Canada, Ontario, is land of opportunity is really a land of opportunity. As long as you have a dream and a hope, you work hard, you work smart, one day you will get there. Some entrepreneur here, I'm not going to touch in the, the school there. I will leave uh, my foreign dignitary to talk about that. But collaboration, engagement, be out there, communicate is what we need. And that's so so entrepreneur. I wish you all one day be the so so entrepreneur. Thank you for having me today. Two days, and I know loads of faces in the audience already. And I really genuinely have felt enormous warmth from you all. This is a fantastic city. It's an amazing town. First time I've ever been in Canada. And uh, you've got a lovely city. It's an amazing and talented people. So, um, and I suppose, you know, I'm hanging around with a particularly excellent bunch of people. So it's not surprising that you're so lovely and doing such an amazing job. Let me tell you a little bit about the school and why the school is different. It's not a traditional school like you might have understood when you went to your school or your college or your university. The School for Social Entrepreneurs, we don't believe that entrepreneurship can be taught. So we, we think that's a bit of a crazy notion. We think entrepreneurship is a doing work and social entrepreneurship is a doing work. So we set up the School for Social Entrepreneurs it's what's called an action learning institution. An action learning, well, what does that mean? It's just jargon for learning by doing, which basically means that people who've got a brilliant idea in their community for a problem that they see, you know, it's happening in front of their eyes, it might affect their direct neighborhood or their family or their community or their neighbors, and they've got a brilliant idea that they've had on the bus or in their flat, and they think, if we did this, this community would turn around and this community would change. And what they do is they apply to come to the School for Social Entrepreneurs and they meet another 20 people who've also got amazing ideas and they form a cohort. And they're in the school for nine months and they work pretty much, you know, most of the time on their projects, making their project, their baby real. And they work that out. But what they do when they come into the school once a week is they hear from what we call witnesses. So entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, who've been there, seen it, and done it, who have, from scratch, created community initiatives and social enterprises and sustained them and grown them over a period of time. And what they do is they come in and share their war wounds. And they don't just tell you the good stories, they say, tell you the difficult stories and the bad stories. And I suppose that what that helps you to do is you to think, well, actually, I can survive this, I can get through this, I can be, you know, as persistent as I need to be to make this thing happen. Um, and you begin to grow in your confidence, you begin to realize that you are legitimate to have a go and start up this thing and sustain it. And so what the school does using an action learning methodology is it concentrates as much on the soft skills required for social entrepreneurship as the hard skills like finance and business and legal structures, etc. So we think it's quite a unique kind of formulation, which is, if you like, uniquely appropriate for social entrepreneurs. Um, now, how do you get a school for social entrepreneurs started in Ontario? Well, unsurprisingly, you need a few very driven social entrepreneurs to make it happen. And my God, we landed lucky here. We have, by sheer fluke, I reckon, just come in on the most wonderful group of people, both the people who are working at School for Social Entrepreneurs, who are, in my opinion, exceptional, um, and also this amazing partnership of organisations, but also the people who are at the table for the School for Social Entrepreneurs from those organisations, and they are incredible. And they are truly social entrepreneurs in their own right. They've, they won't listen to no, 
they will push through, they will bust through bureaucracies and, and structures to say, we're going to make this happen, we're going to make, we're going to make this happen for the sake of our communities because we believe in it and we're going to make it happen. And so I'm really thrilled and honoured to be a part of it. And um, any support and help we can give you from over the pond, any um, bids that we can send you, any documents that you can rip off, all the rest of it, we're here for you. Um, and I know it's going to be a huge success because all the people I've met that are involved with it are remarkable. So congratulations, well done. Before I just start my very brief remarks, I just want to thank the Minister for his incredibly valuable support of the Ontario Trillium Foundation. He's been an, an advocate and a supporter, and through his support for the Ontario Trillium Foundation, I cannot tell you it, it is incalculable the impact that he's had on the nonprofit. So it's a pleasure to be here for the official launch of the School for Social Entrepreneurs Ontario. It's always exciting to be involved with something as it gets underway, but I suspect that. The real excitement will come when the people who are coming here uh, bring their projects to fruition and, and launch their own, uh, their own ideas. Most of us here in the room have been involved, some of us for a very long time, with the not-for-profit sector, and I think it's safe to say that the sector has made great strides in the past few years in terms of thinking outside the box, sometimes taking a few risks, trying some new stuff, developing innovative approaches to challenges, and altering the perception of the sector itself and social enterprise programs in particular. As with anything, it's the challenge of, of um, changing fixed ideas that can take time, but it is happening and social enterprise is quickly becoming one of the most dynamic forms of business in Ontario. A few years ago, Helen Burson, who's one of the great residents of Toronto and a former chair of the um, board of directors of the Ontario Trillium Foundation, was talking about uh, strategy for the not-for-profit sector and she said the following, and I quote, don't let the term not-for-profit fool you. This sector has enormous economic clout and could give private sector corporations lessons in how to meet a bottom line, deliver shareholder value, or run a business efficiently. So you can see why OTF was very enthusiastic about this collaborative, um, innovative approach being taken by all of these groups and bringing the school to us from the UK following this very successful um, model. And we feel that this collaborative will enhance both employment and volunteer opportunities and will greatly uh, in improve the knowledge base within the social enterprise sector, um, providing a model that we hope will be successfully replicated elsewhere in Ontario as well. Last October, the Ontario Trillium Foundation gave your collaborative a three-year grant of $498,200 to establish the school in Ontario and then in Toronto and then replicate hopefully in Ottawa and Windsor eventually. So I know that you've heard a little bit about the school and the model and we're going to hear a little bit more about that as well. But I'd like to just talk very briefly about what the Ontario Trillium Foundation's funds and the, the province of Ontario's funds will be used for without sort of listing everything. A few of the key items, salaries for a development manager and a learning manager, um, purchase of new administrative equipment, marketing and communications costs, and rent. And one of the things, I just have to say from a personal perspective, one of the things that I really enjoy about being involved with the Ontario Trillium Foundation is that the foundation recognizes how crucially important it is to organizations to keep the lights turned on and keep the office staffed. And we have the capacity and capability to do that kind of funding. And from my own personal experience in the not-for-profit sector, it's hugely important. And I personally value being able to provide that kind of support to organizations. And, and Mr. Chan, thank you, for your government, very much for uh, reappointing me to a second term on the board as well. I appreciate it. I enjoy the work immensely. For 30 years, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, an agency of the government of Ontario, has been awarding grants to not-for-profit and charitable groups to help make Ontario communities healthier and more vibrant. When we make a grant, and it's a very careful, thorough process, as I'm sure any of you who've been through the process, but a lot of hits are nodding. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very careful, thorough process that we go through. 
we're really looking at the future. We're looking for new ways to keep organizations, to help organizations complete their projects, but also to help the sector grow, to help the sector expand the reach through innovative approaches. And we feel that the potential of this particular undertaking to have a positive impact on the lives of Ontarians is really significant and is clearly an idea whose time has come. So I'm looking uh, forward to hearing more about the School for Social Entrepreneurs. And on behalf of the Ontario Trillium Foundation, I wish you the very best of success. And I'd like to ask Minister Chan if you would join me to present a plaque from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. extremely, extremely important in, a, in helping us think critically about how we move our project forward. So we appreciate everything that you're, you're doing and we won't let you down. Great. <laughs> Marjorie Victor Brands, who is the director of the School for Social Entrepreneurs Ontario. Uh, but I should also say that I was really accepting this on behalf of all of you because the School for Social Entrepreneurs is not a traditional school. It's not a school that comes with a giant textbook with all the secrets about how to be an entrepreneur. That's not how we work. Uh, it's about mobilizing a community to wrap around the support that uh, budding social entrepreneurs who have great ideas about how to make their community better. It's about you supporting them to be successful to help our communities. So, Really, the school belongs to all of us. There are no lone heroes. Everyone is pitching in uh, to make a contribution. Uh, I just want to say just a couple of, three statistics that explain why I came to the school. First, 70% of the entrepreneurs who come through SSE work in the 20 most deprived communities in the UK. This says volumes. Uh, in years one, two, three, four, and five, SSE-backed ventures are 20% more likely to survive than commercial startup ventures in the UK. We also know that they experienced an average growth rate of 17% versus an average 6% for a traditional commercial startup. These are very impressive statistics. Uh, so I know that other people find this track record incredibly impressive, and that's why we had the leaders and visionaries like uh, HSC, uh, Access Community Capital Funds, uh, the Center for Community Learning and Development, and Mars, joining together to try to bring the school to Ontario. Uh, I want to just very briefly recognize the members of the collaborative, uh, Alfred, Agazi, Adam, Anne, Cynthia, and Hadley. You have done tremendous work to bring us to this point today. You were involved several years before I ever showed up on the scene, or Omar showed up on the scene. So um, I also want to recognize Omar, our learning manager here. And uh, Claire uh, Wong, our intern. She's looking for a job, and she's really, really good. So <laughs> um, and we have at least 15 volunteers here tonight, and I can't take the time to introduce all of them, but. Uh, they are tremendous. We, we live and die at the school on the, the work of volunteers. So I want to just thank all of you because we are collectively embarking on this journey to make the School for Social Entrepreneurs a huge success here in Ontario and um, we couldn't do it without you. What we need to do is take the inspiration from the UK as well as Australia where the school is um, and then make it our own. This has to reflect our reality, our culture, our uh, history, our talents. And that's all up to you in this room. And lastly, I'll just say that this is a tremendous week for us. Uh, this is the uh, 
the ribbon cutting for the school, but we had an event yesterday. Uh, it was a policy discussion with the donor and uh, policy making community. Tomorrow we have a big event to talk about the life of uh, Michael Young, the founder, an extraordinary individual, and uh, that's open to the general public, but it's sold out, so it's too late, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and so in this week, with the article in the Star this morning, CBC uh, Radio this morning as well, we are reaching hundreds, literally, I'm not kidding, hundreds of thousands of people because um, you know these, these have massive circulation. And that's building the momentum for social entrepreneurship here in Canada. And we have only one thing to ask of you. We're launching a social capital campaign this week. In the last month, we have added 650 contacts to our database. We're asking you to help us reach 2,000 contacts by September 15th. We've already picked the low-hanging fruit, so now it's going to get a lot harder. There are pledge forms, Josina and uh, Rishi, there that have the pledge forms. Please help us add names to our database because we can't get there without that. Use your networks. Find, help us find students. Apply to be a student. Be a friend. Be a donor. Be a volunteer. We need you. And um, to get that started, we're going to cut the ribbon to officially mark the opening of the School for Social Entrepreneurs. So I'm going to ask just the members of the collaborative, Omar and um, the minister and uh, Dr. Merck, to please join us in. Hadley here. Hadley. 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 Hadley was the, the key author of the grant that started the school. She better be in this picture. <laughs> All right, everyone ready? Uh, Ralph, or Raphael, sorry. Can drum roll, please. <laughs> I don't know what else there is to say after that, but thank you so much for coming to our launch event and also continuing to be part of our, our journey that's just really starting. We want you all to be included, all to give us your, your leads on social entrepreneurs, and we want to be a part of this community, so we're hoping that you'll welcome us as much as we're trying to welcome you. Thank you. Omar will be holding an info session for people who are interested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 